Good day, grade tens. Welcome to another lesson on chemistry. In chemistry, this is Marshall A. C. Candiado. Today we are looking at shapes of covalent molecules. This is lesson number seven. So in the previous lesson, I remember we were again talking about covalent molecules, but at that time we were looking at the number of or the types of bonds that we had in the types of uh, in, the, in the covalent molecules that we looked at. I remember we looked at methane and how it had four single covalent bonds and we looked at uh, molecules like carbon dioxide and we found that carbon dioxide was actually having some double bonds which means that it had if methane was having single covalent bonds, carbon dioxide was actually having double covalent bonds. Was actually having double covalent bonds. So today now, we are now looking at those same covalent bonds, but we want to now talk about their shapes. We want to talk about their shapes because they have different shapes. So just take a, a few seconds to just look at the objectives. Uh, they are clearly written. Okay, let me, I don't know why this is zooming in. It's not supposed to be zooming in. All you're just supposed to do is to look at the objectives. So take a few, yeah, a few seconds to just go about doing that. Okay, so I hope you looked at the objectives uh, to explain the Vesper theory. Uh, describe the shapes of methane, ammonia, water, carbon dioxide based on the Vesper theory. Okay, so what is this uh, VSP? VSEPR. VSEPR. It's uh, actually known as valency shell electron pair repulsion. Valency, valence shell to say outermost shell to say which electrons or how many electrons do you have in the outermost shell of your atom? Okay, so. Uh, so that we are not confused, let me just look for a simple atom so that you guys can be looking at an atom whilst I explain uh, what the valence shell electron pair repulsion is all about. Okay, guys, so when we're talking about valence shell electron pair repulsion, if you look at uh, this, is, this is chlorine, these are covalent compounds. If you see that this is chlorine and uh, where I'm touching that is oxygen and that is also oxygen. So in the, these are basically the outer shells. These shells that are shown are the outer shells of oxygen and the outer shells of chlorine. So the valency shell electron pair repulsion theory basically states that these electrons, these pairs of electrons, right, that you see that are in these outer shells, they repel each other. They are trying, because they have a similar charge, remember, electrons all have a negative charge. So because they have a similar charge and they are all negative, it means that they are always going to be trying to move as far away from each other as, as possible. They are always going to be trying to move uh, as far away from each other as possible. Uh, this then, if you see here, we then say is repulsion forces uh, between electron pairs take place towards minimum level. That's implying that they want to move as far away from each other as possible and then have this repulsion actually getting to a minimum. Because if they were to move, if the electron pairs were to move closer to each other, then the, the repulsion would be, would be too much. Okay, so I think uh, from the notes that you are looking at, I hope it's uh, pretty clear to understand what this VSEPR theory is about, balanced shell, electron pair repulsion. Right, so we'll also look at how then, as we'll look at the different molecules, like we said in our objectives, we'll look at methane, ammonia, water, and carbon dioxide. So for methane, uh, they are four bonded pairs, right? Four bonded pairs, single covalent pairs. 
single core valvulin valve. Then with ammonia, you will find that there is going to be a lone pair. There is going to be a lone pair, and it's going to affect the shape of the ammonia molecule. It's going to affect the shape of the molecule. And then when you look at uh, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, you're also going to have lone pairs as, as, as well there. And those lone pairs are also, again, going to affect the shape of uh, these molecules. So when, uh, let, let, let me get a, an, an image uh, here. So this is methane. So we are used to drawing methane just as CH4 uh, on a, in a one-dimensional way, in a one-dimensional way. This is how we usually draw methane. Methane is just, we just say CH4, right? And this is what we call a 1D, this is one-dimensional, right? This is one-dimensional, but then in reality, it actually has to appear in uh, a three-dimensional way. This, what you are looking at now, is how methane actually looks like uh, as a 3D shape, right? And what we are looking at right now, are in, the, in the center, the core of it, the black dot, that is the carbon atom, and the four white dots that are coming, uh, those are now that is now hydrogen. Each one of these is representing a hydrogen atom, right? So if it is representing a hydrogen atom, you will find that it's no longer like the way it was looking when it was one dimensional. This is now a three dimensional shape. This is now a three dimensional shape. And we will be concerned to say what then is the angle between these two atoms between these two atoms. As you can see, there are four hydrogen atoms that are bonded to the central carbon. So you will also be concerned with finding to say what is the bond angle between these two atoms, right? So if we go back to our PDF, we'll find that the bond angle for the methane molecule is stated as being 109.5 degrees. 109.5 degrees, not 0.5 degrees Celsius. This is not temperature, right? This is a bond angle between, right, two different points. So don't say degrees Celsius, please. And then the name of this shape is referred to as being tetrahedral. It's uh, known as being tetrahedral methane. So this is the shape of the methane molecule. Please uh, take a look at uh, this molecule. Okay, let me. So I was saying that is the shape of the methane molecule 100 uh, with, a, with, a, with a bond angle of 109,5 degrees. Right, that is for methane. Now we will also look at uh, another. Uh, okay, so, so before we proceed, I just wanted you guys just to see this part. Uh, it's explaining very clearly if you understand what we are talking about, uh, the shape of the, of the methane molecule. So just keep looking at, it's a tetrahedral molecule, right, based on a pyramid. You know the pyramid, right? If you know a pyramid, if you know a pyramid, then this is based basically on a pyramid. That is what it is based on. If you've ever seen the pyramids of Giza, the pyramids in Egypt, if you've seen those, right, or anything that is pyramidal shaped, uh, this is what it is based on, right? This is a tetrahedral shape, okay? And so it's a tetrahedral molecule, and what you're also concerned with is the bond angle, the bond angle. So you'll find here that the bond angle between these hydrogen atoms that are bonded to the carbon is 109,5 degrees. Okay, so we have specified that part. Now, let us look at the ammonia molecule. Okay, so before we look at the ammonia molecule, can you guys just maybe take a minute to draw the bow, like the bow structure for the ammonia molecule. It's NH3, NH3. Just take uh, a minute or two just to draw NH3. I know we drew it last, uh, in the last lesson, so please just draw it again. When you, when you draw these molecules over and over, 
then that's how they stick into your mind. That's how they stick into your mind, and then it's easier for you to recall. So draw the ammonia molecule and just pause the video for a couple of minutes. Okay, so I hope that is the pore structure for the ammonia molecule that you're able to draw with nitrogen in the center and three hydrogen atoms attached to the nitrogen. And you'll find that it has one, two, three bonded pairs for the hydrogen. And this, these two electrons, which are not bonded to any other atom, these are what we call the lone pair. This is the lone pair of electrons and it's going to affect the shape of the ammonia molecule right so if we look at this one uh, on on uh, this page we find that ammonia is having a bond angle of 107 degrees right so this is why we now need to understand that okay for for methane Right. We found that the bond angle was 109,5 uh, degrees. It's still here. It's even still here showing on the, on the page. Right, 109,5 degrees. But for ammonia, the bond angle is 107 degrees. Unfortunately, every time I touch the PDF, it, um, it enlarges itself. That's not the intention. The intention is for you to see where I'm pointing. Right, so 107 degrees. And this is caused because this lone pair, the lone pair, where is written lone pair, is actually more uh, repulsive than the bonded pairs. It's actually more repulsive than the bonded pairs. So this is actually what your three-dimensional ammonia is going, ammonia molecule is going to look like. Okay. So when we are looking at it on a one-dimensional plane, it just looks like this. This is what ammonia looks like on the one-dimensional plane. But on a three-dimensional plane, you find that it is now having uh, a different shape. And there we're just highlighting how it is a lone pair of electrons, which actually repel more than the bonding electrons. Just please take note here, the repulsion, please note here that the repulsion is stronger, right? The repulsion is stronger uh, for these lone pairs. The lone pair repulsion, the lone pair electrons, their repulsion is stronger than the bonded pair. Guys, Rita, Maria, Elena, Tuna, Jane, Verimuin, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Uh, this is a lone pair, and this lone pair is more repellent. It repels the other atoms more than these bonded pairs. These ones are called bonded pairs the ones with hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen, nitrogen, those are known as bonded pairs. And they are less repulsive or less repellent. <laughs> I, I, whenever I say repulsive and repellent, I just think of it as in, in a bad way. Right? They repel uh, other electrons much more than the bonded pairs. Okay? So the repulsion is stronger. And that then in turn goes on to affect the shape of the molecule. Okay, so now let's uh, observe the shape of the ammonia molecule. Observe that in the center, that is the nitrogen, and those three are the hydrogen molecules. But ex observe how now the bond angle is reduced from 109,5 degrees to 107 degrees. That is because of this lone pair. I am continuously tapping on the lone pair, right? I hope you can see that I'm continuously tapping on on that one, right? And this is caused by the extra repulsion. This lone pair has extra repulsion as compared to the bond pairs that are found in uh, methane. Okay, cool. Okay, so that, that that's, that's what we're basically talking about. This is what it, this lesson is about. Shapes of covalent molecules. Understanding that the shapes are based, right? The shapes are based on the bond pairs that are there. Are they lone pairs or are they bond pairs? What are the angles? And the angles are given, right? So if you look at methane, the angle for methane is given, 109.5. The meth angle for uh, ammonia, NH3, 107, right? And even the type of shape. So you'll find that for ammonia, we say it's pyramidal, whereas for methane, we say it's tetrahedral. 
for methane, we say the shape was tetrahedral, and the shape for ammonia is pyramidal. Is pyramidal, right? Then we also want to look at the shape for water. Right, now let's look at the water molecule. That is the Bohr diagram, basically, of uh, the water molecule. You remember the lines are just the same as drawing the dot and the cross. You know, with, with time, you get to a point where you just realize that, okay, so the line is the same as the dot and the cross, and the dot and the cross are actually electrons. So this is actually water, and this is what it looks like on the one-dimensional plane. And then we want to look at what it looks like when uh, it's no longer in the one-dimensional plane. So if we look at water, we had it here. This is now carbon dioxide. H2O. The molecule H2O, this one, right? This is the molecule of water. And you find that it has a bond angle of 104,5 degrees. Right? What was the previous bond angle? In, in ammonia, it was 107. Now it's 104,5. Observe that the bond angle keeps getting smaller because here with water, there are now two lone pairs. There are two lone pairs. Pa lone pairs are pairs of electrons that are not bonded to anything else. So these are two lone pairs and their repulsion is much greater. It is much greater and it results in the shape of this water molecule uh, being referred to as being V-shaped. Here it says bent, uh, but it's also known as a V-shaped molecule. It's a V-shaped molecule. Let's look at how it progresses from being the one-dimensional shape, right, the Bohr diagram, uh, but you can identify, you can see here, the two lone pairs. Let's see how it then progresses to produce uh, the type of shape in the three-dimensional way that we would want to see. Right, so we say it then has a V shape, right? I hope you were able to see this part, how they just took the V effectively like that. Right. So it has a V-shape, okay, based on these electron pairs, right? It's based on, but this is now for all the for all the molecules. So let's go back a bit, just right. So with the with the, with the bond angle of a hundred and four with of a hundred and four degrees, here is just a slight variance. One point. Let's let's go with hundred and four point five. Let's take this one as our bond angle, right? For water. That is the bond angle, and it is caused by these two lone pairs, right? If we were to look at carbon dioxide, right, this is actually known as linear, planar, linear shaped carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide. So if you can draw, you guys then just draw the, the, the bow structure for the CO2, showing the bonded electrons and the lone pairs of electrons, you'll find that I think there are, there are two that side and there are two, there are four. There are four lone pairs when you look at the carbon dioxide molecule. And their repulsion is so much to the extent that it actually causes the shape of the carbon dioxide to be linear, right? If, if, if it was less, then it would also be V-shaped, right? It would also be V-shaped. But because there are four lone pairs and their repulsion is so great, Right. For them, they are trying to be as far away from each other as possible. That, was, that is what results in uh, the shape of the carbon dioxide molecule. So that's been, um, that is basically it on valency shell electron pair repulsion. To say, based on the assumption that electron pairs in valency shells repel one another due to their light charge. This is what the theory is based on. It's based on... It's, 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 it's actually factual. It's, it's, if you look at it, to say these are negative electrons, so therefore they are going to repel each other. That is law, right? That is a law. There is no way of going against each other. Like, uh, like charges repel each other. Okay? So this then causes the different molecules to have different shapes be based on uh, this repulsion. And it also affects the bond angle, how big the bond angle is based on the number of 
loan pay of elections that are there or bonded pay of elections that are there. This all affects the shape of uh, the covalent molecule. So thank you guys. Uh, we'll meet tomorrow. Yeah, because I'm recording this the thing before the lesson. We'll meet tomorrow in the lesson. Please, as always, watch the video, listen, read, 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 and then you'll be able to participate in the lesson. Uh, thank you very much. This is Marshall A.C. Candiado.